Great to have you back here on The Breakfast. Uh, our final conversation this morning is on the rearrest of uh, Nandi Kanu, the leader, a self-acclaimed leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. It uh, broke Nigerian news yesterday uh, where the federal government, of course, had stated that he had been rearrested and has been charged to court. Uh, of course, the uh, next uh, court session will be on the 26th of July. This morning, we're speaking with Nick Agule, a political analyst, to share his thoughts on some of the details concerning this. Good morning, Mr. Agule. Good morning. Okay, I uh, would, uh, of course, uh, hold on until he connects with us fully uh, to get into these details. The controversy concerning where he was arrested, if there was any extradition or not, if he was picked up in a different country from the UK, and uh, some of all of that. I, I, I saw a lot of people going, you know, you know, with their own theories yesterday, you know, talking about how the UK, you know, has betrayed, not, you know, Nigeria, how the UK doesn't care, and some of all of that, you know. But good thing that there was a statement from the uh, UK's office saying that he wasn't picked up in the UK. Um, and so now we move to con talking about what happens in the trial, you know, how does he get a fair trial? Um, and of course, um, if the things that he has been charged for, you know, you know, what, what are his chances, you know, concerning them? Um, and there's so much, you know, the, the ability to also hold a trial that wouldn't also, um, you know, turn the, the country into chaos because of the thousands and thousands of followers that he has that also need to understand that, you know, the law is the law. And if you've broken the law in any way, then you, of course, you have to uh, go through that process. Mr. Agule, good morning once again. Good morning. Sorry, I, I had to attend to someone who came in here. All right. Great to have you on the program this morning. Let's quickly get your thoughts yes. on uh, the news, you know, on his arrest. There was controversy, you know, concerning where he was arrested, if it was in the UK, if he had to go through an extradition process or not. So, but, you know, you start with, you know, your response or your feelings concerning his uh, rearrest and what this means. Okay, thank you very much, and good morning to the viewers. Yes, the, the news of the arrest of M. Nadi Kano came to me as a, as a surprise. Uh, it was not expected. I didn't uh, have any inkling that uh, this was going to happen. Uh, what I can say is that the long arms of the law can reach out to anybody anywhere in the world, especially in these days where we live in a globalized world. So this arrest confirms the fact that the law can reach out to anybody and there is no more hiding place. And that is the first thing. The second thing is that the, the, the government is doing the right thing if they believe that now the Kano has a case to answer. So the best way is to put him through trial. I mean, if we're in the military regime, they could have taken him out. They could have either shot him or the kind of atrocities we used to see in the military era. But now the government is going the judicial process of putting him through trial so that it gives him an opportunity to defend himself. So in that regard, yes, this is a step in the right direction. But the government has to show sincerity of purpose. In Nigeria, the, you know, there is the feeling that the long arm of the law you know, has eyes, it's not blind. So it sees certain people, goes after them, and other people who are engaging in similar criminality or some other form of criminality are not being apprehended or brought to book. So the government needs to show sincerity or purpose that the long arm of the law has no respect for any person, that all citizens are equal before the law, and whoever does anything wrong is going to be held to account. That is the, that is the, the second thing. The third thing is the delivery of justice. As it is said, justice delayed is justice denied. So uh, this trial of Nandi Kano has to be expeditious. It has to be fair. It has to be firm. 
and he has to give him all the rights that he has, including the fact that he is innocent until proven guilty. And, and then fourthly, the, his treatment while he is now in, a, in, in custody. He, his human rights must not be abused. He has to be given uh, uh, decent treatment uh, required of, by him as a human being and a citizen of the country. And he has to, he has to be accorded um, welfare, including medical services, his, his feeding, and even a place of incarceration should be decent enough to show that uh, we are a democratic country that is focused on uh, enforcing the law in a firm and fair way. Okay, Mr. Agule, um, there are other secessionist groups in Nigeria. There's the Oduan Nation, uh, there's the Afenifer group who say that there will not be an election in 2023 if you know they, they do not go their separate way. There's just, just many others in the country and uh, it seems that Namdikano has been made an example of. So do you think the government's next move should be going after these people to arrest them? And how do you think this case, um, this trial of Namdikano might set a precedent? To me, I believe that uh, our constitution grants us the freedom of uh, opinion, uh, freedom of free speech. So if someone comes up to make a statement to say, uh, we need to be given uh, self-governance, or we need to have self-determination, and that uh, elections we not hold, except uh, the, our, our demands are met, to me, they are only exercising their freedom of free speech. And I'm not going to quarrel with that. What I quarrel with is, uh, what, I, what, I quarrel, what I quarrel with is when people engage in any form of criminality. If you engage in any form of criminality, then the long arm of the law should come after you. So uh, agitations on their own, that is what the democratic process is all about. And if people are just agitating and asking that they, this is what they want, that is fine. But immediately you engage in any act of criminality, what that then means is that the government has a duty to protect innocent citizens who are now victims of your, of your uh, uh, criminal activities. And that duty of protecting those citizens has to be fair by the government. And I believe uh, that is what is happening to Nadi Kanu and should happen to any of the other groups if they should engage in any act of criminality. All right. Um, what, what do you think his chances are with uh, the things that he has been charged with? Uh, treason is one of them, inciting violence. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the events in the Southeast in the last um, uh, three months. Uh, do you think that, you know, he would get proper representation in court? Do you think that he stands any chance, um, you, know, with, you know, with these charges against him? It is very important. The government must create the enabling environment to ensure that Nandi Kanu receives a fair trial a fair and judicious and expeditious trial. If the government has evidence that Nnadi Kanu has committed acts of treason or treasonable felony, as it is called, or he's part of any treasonable uh, charge uh, um, uh, actions against the state of Nigeria, or the terrorist actions that are happening anywhere in Nigeria or elsewhere, including the, the uh, uh, unknown government, or is it unknown government as, as they are called, in the Southeast, if they have evidence that if now the Kanu is responsible for these criminal activities, or he sponsoring them, or is in cahoots with anyone who is perpetrating these acts, then it behoves on the government to table those charges and evidence in court 
So that in now the time we have his day of defense. He will have his day in court to defend himself against these charges. And if he completely shows that he is innocent of these charges, he, he, justice demands that he should be let free. But if the government convinces the judiciary that uh, Nadi Kanu is indeed complicit, then of course he has to be held to account. This is the only way we can run a country and uh, expect uh, uh, development when people are held to account, regardless of their status in society, from the lowest to the highest. How, how do you think that the government can manage this um, period to ensure that it doesn't um, generate uh, reprisal or, you know, the emotions of people of the Southeast, you know, and his followers who are in their thousands around the Southeast? Um, how can the Nigerian government ensure that it doesn't cause more chaos uh, than in the past? a very good question, and that is the duty of government. The duty of government, the primary duty of government, is to provide security of lives and property and provide welfare to the people. So the government has to take all the measures to ensure that this duty is not compromised. So on the one hand, the government is putting in the candidate through trial. On the second hand, the government has to take adequate steps to forestall and it's very important that these steps have to prevent any breakdown of law and order. It's not for government to wait. And when there's a breakdown of law and order, they come out with their guns and start shooting people. So this has to be the government winning the hearts and minds of the people, of giving people the confidence that Unadi Kanu is going to be taken through a judicious process, of the government reaching out to the leaders of of thought in, in the Southeast, including the traditional institution, the political leadership, the religious leadership, and of course, uh, the, the arms of government in the Southeast, the state and the local governments in the Southeast, and other uh, groups like Uhaneze and all of that in the Southeast, by government reaching out to them, explaining the situation, bringing them on board, and also showing by concrete evidence that Unadi Kanu is receiving fair and just treatment as he is in the custody of government now. And that is going to prevent any breakdown of law and order. The government shouldn't just wait until when there's a breakdown and then they come out with guns for that terrorizing the people. Um, Mr. Wuwe, uh, some analysts have said that the secession, the Biafra agitation is beyond Namdi Kanu, and that even when Namdi Kanu is no more, someone else will rise up to lead that movement. Um, do you agree with this um, um, school of thought? And also, how about the government addressing these um, fundamental issues that made all this agitation, agi um, secessionist agitation come up in the first place, such as restructuring? Do you think that would be, you know, the, the final answer? That's a good uh, question. Uh, yes, indeed. As you can see, these agitations for self-determination, uh, for restructuring, self-governance or secession or whatever uh, name it goes by, have increased in tempo in recent times. And that is precisely because Nigerians are no longer feeling out of the federation. They are, they are feeling being left out. You know, there are certain parts of the country that think that they are not getting a fair deal from Nigeria as a state. So this is what is now oiling or fueling these agitations. So the first thing to be done is for the federal government of Nigeria to take actions, including appointments and all that in the federal uh, government, to be fair, mm -hmm. so that people feel that feel a sense of belonging to the state of Nigeria. Now, don't feel as if they are, they are strangers or they are being short change. So that is one thing. The second thing is that on the side of the people, I have no problem for people voicing that they want to stand alone through a referendum. That is a legal process. Even here in the UK, 
The Scottish people had a referendum about two or three years ago that they wanted to leave the United Kingdom and be on their own. But unfortunately, the constitution of Nigeria does not have a provision for a referendum, which is the most legitimate and legal and bloodless way for people to have self-determination and decide to be on their own if they so wish. So it behoves on the government to change the constitution and make the constitution to have a referendum inside. All right. And that is in. what and that and that role is from three people. It either comes from the executive, which is the federal government, or it comes from the legislature itself, or it comes from citizens of Nigeria. All right. Who will put a bill in the National Assembly to amend the, uh, the Constitution to have a referendum. And if the National Assembly is not amending the Constitution to give Nigerian citizens the right to set determination through a referendum, Nigerian citizens have to begin the process of dealing with National Assembly members. The Constitution provides Nigerian citizens the power to recall National Assembly members. All right, Nika, so instead of having ESN to cause havoc and, 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 and killings, let the people of the Southeast begin to engage their National Assembly members that they need a bill to be tabled in the National Assembly for a referendum. And if the National Assembly members from the East are not doing that, then they should start their recall process. Okay. All right. Mr. Gole, Mr. Mr. Gole, recall the three senators to... from each of the five states in the East. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We would have to um, end the conversation here. Um, the recall process is, a, is a, not a very huge conversation. But thank you very much for um, what we've been able to share so far. Uh, we'd, of course, look forward to talking with you again as this uh, case um, uh, develops. Thanks thank you again. very much. Th thank you very much. I will wish him that you can do well. Thanks. Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, this is where we will be wrapping up this morning. If you missed out on any of these conversations, remember to join us on our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram, same with our YouTube channel. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Same bye-bye.